There's a problem with MacBook Air reviews. They suck. Let's face it, the majority of YouTubers you watch are used to using computing systems with the maximum amount of storage, memory, CPU, and spend too much time talking about the performance of the MacBook Air to a large segment of the audience that, quite frankly, doesn't care. Because we at Greg's Gadgets are tearing up the benchmarks. We are throwing away thermal throttling tests, and we are taking a bite out of the competition because for the first time ever, on your color television screens, we are doing a MacBook Air review that actually focuses on the user experience and why that really matters when you're deciding to buy a laptop. Or just a review without benchmarks. So first of all, why a MacBook Air? You, as a consumer, have plenty of options out on the market today, especially if you're shopping outside of Apple's Pleasant Wall Garden. So you could easily pick up a cheap Windows laptop or a cheap Chromebook, or even find a Windows laptop at a similar price range to the M3 MacBook Air that all in all looks to offer a similar experience. The problem with these laptop alternatives is even though they pretend to be direct competitors to the MacBook Air, they kind of aren't. They're all in a way, pretenders to the throne. Because none of these laptops are as well balanced as the MacBook Air, and I mean that figuratively, although literally the weight of this laptop is pretty well balanced as well. So it all starts on the outside. Let's face it, you don't want something that looks cheap, you don't want something that feels cheap, you want a premium design that will not only stand the test of time, but look great for years to come. And if there's one reoccurring shared element about Apple's designs is that they stand the test of time. You can buy this thing and I guarantee you, you use this thing a decade later and people are still gonna think it looks sharp. You could take a MacBook from a decade ago, people are gonna go, you know what, that actually still looks pretty good. The MacBook Air fits this trope. It is a beautifully slim package with a 13.6 inch display that goes almost edge to edge, and it's covered in a premium aluminum body that feels rock solid even with its thinner design. You also get a great keyboard for typing on, and if you're used to MacBook trackpads, you already know the MacBook Air has the best trackpad in the entire laptop game. There's really nothing that can compete with it. But what really separates the Air from other laptops is its mixture of competent performance with stellar battery life of around 14 hours with mixed usage of browsing the web, watching videos, editing photos, and contemplating your entire life's existence as you stare at an empty Word document unable to think of what to write next. the M3 MacBook Air will easily power you through a long day of work. And that has been by far the biggest experience change for me, moving over from the older MacBooks to these new Apple Silicon MacBooks. When I leave my house, I never pack a charger with me unless it's on a very long trip. I know that my laptop will have battery to spare by the time I get back home, and I'm never hunting for an outlet at the cafe. I no longer have to take that bad table all the way in the corner without any natural sunlight, all the way in the back. You know the one, the one right next to the restroom, people walking in and out of it. You don't have to do that anymore when you get an Apple Silicon MacBook. It can handle all the basic work tasks you would expect any laptop to do. So yes, even on the base model, you can open multiple tabs, have your spreadsheets open, watch a video while you're doing that, and then pretend to pay attention to the video conference call that you're on. Don't worry, the operating system is going to stay completely smooth. Just make sure every once in a while when uh, you know your boss asks you like a question, you know, just make sure you give a nod. Give a, mm -hmm, that sounds good, boss and you'll probably fool them. But don't let other reviewers fool you because this base model is still more than enough even for complex tasks. Photo editing, light video editing, coding, they're all easily accessible on this Mac. And honestly, there's never been a better time to be a budget Mac user who still wants to dabble with more powerful applications. And I think that's great, especially for students. You can now get a Mac that is going to 
be with you at the base level, but then be able to grow with you as well as you start to explore your freedom into more creative pursuits and passions. And hey, what student doesn't like to play a game from time to time and provide it you're either playing some older Mac OS games or ones that are actually now properly optimized for Apple Silicon, you can even get some pretty decent gaming performance on the M3 MacBook Air. So many reviewers are so quick to bash the base model as not being good enough, but the truth of the matter is, is that it is good enough. Is it the fastest computer that Apple sells? No, but if I took 100 people and put them in a room and had them use this laptop as they normally would in direct comparison against a MacBook Pro, well, the vast majority of those users would have the same exact experience as they would on this MacBook Air as they would on the MacBook Pro. And in fact, they probably would have a more enjoyable time on the MacBook Air because in general use, it's just as fast as the MacBook Pro, but it's still completely silent it's thinner and it's lighter. And if you don't think that consumers value that, you're crazy. And sure, as Apple's base level laptop design, it is not leading the industry in pretty much any category. It's not leading the industry in its display, its speakers, its webcam, even in its weight and thinness, while it's the thinnest MacBook that exists, it isn't the thinnest laptop in the world. But most of those features are either good or good enough that the MacBook Air is Honestly, when you look at it as a whole, an extremely well-rounded laptop. And while lots of other laptops compromise in a very specific area, don't even get me started on trying to pick between resolutions on Windows laptops, it's crazy over there. There is kind of not really many compromises for going for a MacBook Air. I also think it's more well-rounded than the M2 or M1 Air ever was because it now supports two external monitors with the lid closed, which makes it a much better laptop for enterprise users that need a multi-monitor workstation setup or anyone that just wants to use two monitors. But above all of this, the biggest deciding factor for getting a MacBook Air is the software. One of the main experience differences between a MacBook compared to a Windows machine is Mac OS. And Mac OS overall, at least for me, is simpler to use and looks a lot better doing it. And chances are, if you are interested in a MacBook, there's a good chance you own an iPhone. And there are a lot of similar user interface designs and features that work between both of these devices that not only make them easier to learn, but also makes them work great together. So this is the perfect laptop, right? No, I mean, nothing's perfect. And there are weaknesses. I think the biggest one and the most obvious one for most users is that it still has a pretty limited port selection. Two Thunderbolt USB-C ports and a MagSafe charging port for a lot of users, that's gonna be pretty limiting. But if I am being honest, we are talking about the experience of most users and yeah, there's a large number of users that will never plug anything into their MacBooks except plug it in to charge it because we live in a pretty wireless and interconnected world and the vast majority of users, the most they're probably ever gonna transfer to this MacBook is maybe just a little airdrop of like a video or a photo or their notes or something like that. So yeah, even that, probably not that big of a deal. Well, I'll end this video with a personal story. When I was in college, I couldn't afford a MacBook. My parents couldn't afford to buy me a MacBook either. So instead, I opted to buy a cheaper Windows laptop. And even though I learned how to use Windows begrudgingly, I never enjoyed it. To make matters worse, I was practically raised on my parents' iMac. I knew exactly how macOS worked. And more importantly, I already knew how to use all the creative apps that came bundled in with macOS. I used to fool around with iMovie in high school all the time editing videos. So while in college, I was able to research and write papers just fine on my Windows laptop, I didn't do anything creative. I completely forgot about all the creative things I used to do on my iMac. And when I think back to that, it makes me kind of sad because even though I was just using a laptop, I lost a crucial part of my identity. I lost a crucial part of my expression. It's why today I'm so passionate about tech. I know firsthand just how important and how empowering it is to use tech that resonates with you. And honestly, I wish I had something as amazing and as capable as this M3 MacBook Air when I was in school. I know not only would I have enjoyed using it more than a Windows laptop, but I know it would have erased the technical boundaries between me and my creativity. And that is priceless. That is something maybe I should have spent extra money on. 
back then. So is the M3 MacBook Air a great laptop? Yeah, it really is. And it's one of the best entry-level Macs I have ever had the pleasure of using. If you wanna buy one, if you're on the fence, I say go for it. And hey, if you're gonna buy one, check out my affiliate link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, give me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one. I really hope the video helped you out because it was fun making it. So it's a win-win it's a for me and you. All right, seriously, I'll catch you next time.